Hey everybody, it's Tyler Austin from Midgard Strength and Conditioning. Thank you so much for watching. So I'm going to start a little series here called Intro into CQB. Now I just want to throw this out there. I would not consider myself necessarily some uber experts on this topic. However, I do have training and quite a bit of knowledge on this, which I would like to share with you uh, through this series. But just be aware that, you know, I wouldn't consider myself some, you know, super expert in this. Although, like I said, I do have knowledge. I do have training on it. And I believe I certainly have enough to be able to share with you. So, you know, take this for what it is. Um, this is not This is going to be a many, many part series. I don't plan on doing any necessarily super long videos. However, it's going to be, like I said, a multi-part series with shorter videos, um, and each one is going to build off of the other. So it's going to be best for you to watch this in chronological order because each, um, each separate video is going to build off the previous. So be aware of that. Obviously, this is episode one, but as you go through um, uh, further videos on this in the series, uh, do be aware that it's going to be best for you to watch these and like I said, like chronological order. So with that being said, um, episode one, if you will, uh, is going to be on basic room shapes and basic room geometry. Uh, now I know some of you are going, that's boring. Well, the truth is understanding this is actually very, very important to just having fundamental understanding of CQB because Different room shapes are going to, you know, depending on the room shape and the room geometry, it's going to change quite a bit on how you not only clear that room, but how you move through that room, uh, work through it, fight in it, et cetera, et cetera. So room geometry, <clears throat> excuse me, is actually very, very important and you need to understand it. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into it. So there are four basic uh, fundamental room shapes. There are going to be some other oddball ones I'm going to talk about after this. But there are four major shapes that you're going to see um, very, very commonly throughout you know, virtually any building you go through, whether that's a residential building or a commercial building. So the first one is going to be a square or box-shaped room. This is pretty self-explanatory. It is a room that is basically box-shaped. And by box-shaped, what I mean by that, or square-shaped, Basically, the room is is roughly as wide as it is deep, right? It's roughly square shaped, right? It's basic geometry, okay? Um, so that's a square or box shape. Like I said, pretty self-explanatory. Next, we have a rectangular room. Now, again, not very complicated. Uh, so this is a room, a rectangular room would be a room that is wider than it is deeper. Now, you know, in terms of, like, this is going to be, you know, in later videos, of course, but, you know, in terms of how you clear these two rooms, um, it's going to be about the same, really. Um, you know, the procedures for clearing both a square and a rectangular room, it's actually going to be pretty, pretty uh, similar. However, you know, the two different geometries here do does change things, right? So, again, we'll, we'll dive more into that in later videos, but, you know, even though these two are about the same in terms of like your procedures for clearing it, the angles and the geometry does change things a little bit, right? So it's just one of those things on why this is important. Next, we have a linear room. Now, this is a room that is significantly deeper than it is wider. Now, kind of a pop quiz, if you will. Uh, in terms of geometry, a rectangular room and a linear room are basically identical. I mean, a linear room is just a rectangular room flipped 90 degrees, really. So even though these two are you know, geometrically uh, the same, what makes these two so much different? Right? Kind of a pop quiz, if you will. Now, I did put doorways on here for a reason. Uh, so, the, so a linear room, um, you know, the, the, although, like I said, geom geometrically speaking, these two are the same, how you enter the room completely changes, um, completely changes everything, right? So in a rectangular room, you're entering via, let's just say, the sides of that room. Um, and in a linear room, you're entering via the ends, let's say, um, of that. So 
depending on how you enter that room and your perspective into that room, it completely changes the game. So for example, you know, a rectangular room, this is a lot harder to clear than a linear room, right? Because you can, I don't want to dive too deep onto like further, uh, further video um, uh, topics, but let's just say this is a lot harder to clear because you're working with a lot more angles and you have, you just have a lot more angles to clear in a rectangular room than you have in a linear room, right? You can clear this entire room, a linear room, just from the outside of the door because, again, there's really nowhere to hide, if you will. There's, there's very limited angles. However, a linear room, although easier to clear, it's a lot more dangerous to move through, work through, and certainly fight um, in because, again, for the, for the same reasons why it's so easy to clear, because it's a very compressed environment, um, especially for like a room, and it's very dangerous. So if you had to, let's say, let's say this was connected uh, let me erase her. So let's say they, these, so let's say this, what, dropped it. Uh, so let's say this linear room led into the square room, right? This would be a very dangerous area to travel through because again, it's very compressed and anyone who is in here has a lot of freedom of movement relative to what you have. So uh, very easy to clear. However, very dangerous to walk through, move through, uh, work in and fight in. Uh, so, you know, again, although geometrically basically the same, the way you enter that room and your perspective into that room completely changes, um, completely changes everything on how you're going to, how you're going to work with it. All right, so enough of that. All right, then finally for our major, major room shapes, we now have L-shaped rooms. Now, um, L-shaped rooms. Um, now, when I say rooms, I'm just kind of using broad terminology here because these things could really be anything. Like, for example, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a room. So, like, a square could actually be, let's say, a courtyard, an outside courtyard uh, that's walled off, right? It, you would actually approach that the same exact way. Uh, you know, a linear room, very common, is just going to be, like, hallways and corridors, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be a room in, in the traditional sense. Like, a, for example, this, a linear room could actually just be like an alleyway. So, again, we're talking about rooms because we're primarily talking about like room clearing and stuff like that. Um, but be aware that it doesn't necessarily have to, um, these don't, don't necessarily apply to things that only would count as rooms or necessarily inside buildings. Like I said, you know, this could actually be an alleyway and you would approach this very similar to how you would uh, work in a, in like a hallway, just for, just so you're aware. Um, so again, going back to L-shaped, so common L-shaped um, rooms, if you will, another one really common one would just be one hallway leading off to another that breaks off at a 90 degree. So basically two linear rooms connected uh, with the other one being at a 90 degree. That'd be a very common one. Uh, but there are L-shaped rooms out there and probably one of the most common ones that you would certainly be aware of would be something like a hotel room. So a very common hotel room setup would be you have your door obviously that leads to like a really small hallway. Now typically there would be a bathroom off to either side, um, but that's doored, that's doored off and um, or has at least a door on it unless you're in a really shitty hotel. So we'll just ignore that for now. But either way, you have a door that leads to like typically like a little small short hallway, and then it breaks off either to the left or to the right into some sort of like basically like a square shaped room where you have your beds, obviously your nightstands, you have, have like a little TV in the middle, right? Very common L shaped room, right? So, um, so L shapes are L shaped rooms. That's another very common one, not as common as certainly squares, rectangulars, or even linears, but still very common in both residential and, and certainly commercial buildings. So those are the major room shapes. Now, we are now going to talk about some like the oddball ones real, real quick. Um, these are gonna be some like weird ones that you need to know, but they're not terribly common, particularly in residential buildings. Uh, however, uh, you will see them particularly in larger commercial buildings. So the first one is going to be a T-shape. So, you know, 
something like this. Oh, that's ugly. Look at that eraser. So this would be a so this would be a T-shaped, and basically all this is it's essentially two L-shaped L-shaped rooms, if you will, put together. Um, it's not very common for rooms to be shaped like this. Now, occasionally you might have a room that has like a doorway. You know, a doorway would probably be here. Um, that leads to like a little hallway that then leads to a much larger room, maybe like a like a classroom or something. You occasionally see that, but typically what a T-shaped room would be is going to be one hallway that connects to another hallway, right? And next you would actually have on top of that would be like a cross shaped, which there's, I mean, at least not to my knowledge, there's no rooms that are shaped like this. Again, this would be primarily a hallway. So one hallway that connects to another hallway, but the first hallway, you know, continues going straight. So that would be like a cross shaped uh, room, if you will. Again, it's not really a room, it's just a hallway that connects to another hallway. So those are like the oddball ones. Uh, again, you primarily just see those in like large commercial buildings. Um, you know, there, there's different ways to deal with that, that make it so that way it deserves its own like little oddball shape, if you will. Uh, but again, not as common and you know we'll we'll talk about those but um but these these are not nearly as common as like your box rectangular and linear and l-shaped rooms so those are basic room shapes and the next video we are going to talk about angles and discuss angles within rooms uh, i hope you found this video helpful and informative i hope you uh hope you go see the next video and i look forward to continuing this series i think it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope you get a lot out of it. I'm Tyler Austin from Midgard Strength and Conditioning. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, informative, and entertaining. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, or follow depending on where you're watching this. You can follow me on Instagram at Tyler underscore Midgard Strength, and I am also on Zion. My two community pages are Midgard Strength and Conditioning and Gungnir Strategic. You can scan their respective codes here or search for them on the community search page. If you like my strength and conditioning content, check out my podcast, The Classical Strength Podcast, available on all major podcast platforms. Finally, if you would like to become stronger and healthier than you've ever been in your life, consider hiring me as your coach. I offer the most effective and personalized online coaching in the industry. So if that's something that would interest you, visit my website, MidgardStrength.com, or you can email me directly at tyler at midgardstrength.com. Thanks for watching.